Hi, it's Lisa. So last week I posted a video about Authority Nutrition that Authority Nutrition shared on his Facebook page and I got so many comments on it, especially by people who are following a low carb diet. Further on in the thread, People Sucks linked two different studies. I won't read out everything that this person said about these studies, but I don't think it was interpreted in the best way or in a practical way. So this is my reply to what People Sucks said. From what I understand, fructose that is not consumed in the form of fruit may be harmful. Although I don't agree with all of Robert Lustig's dietary views, I believe Lustig has said that eating fruit is not the same as eating high fructose corn syrup because of the other nutrients that are in fruit. In the second study you linked, fructose in the form of refined sugars is the focus of controversy, not fruit or other whole plant foods. The article makes the statement that a large market has developed for the popularity and promotion of low-fat diets. Interestingly, however, the decline in dietary fat consumption has not corresponded to a decrease in obesity. In fact, the opposite trend has emerged. Well, actually, contrary to what that study says, America as a population has added in low-fat junk foods and refined sugar foods to a diet high in fat while not lowering their fat intake. Of course, this is going to cause health problems. And I linked to another article that says America did not follow the advice of lowering their fat intake. They added refined, low-fat, junk food carbs into their diet and did not lower their fat intake at all. So while it looked like their fat intake was decreasing in terms of percentage of calories, they were actually still consuming very high-fat, high-calorie diets. And in addition to that, eating refined carbs. So of course they're going to be getting obese. People Sucks had also mocked me for saying that I didn't know how de novo lipogenesis worked. I said, People Sucks, you were mocking me previously for saying that de novo lipogenesis is the pathway of last resort for body fat gain, yet the first study you linked says this in the intro which proves my point. So the study says, although excess dietary fat can be stored extensively in adipose tissue, the storage of excess dietary carbohydrate is more limited and the metabolism of dietary carbohydrate more complex. Only a small fairly stable reserve of 200 to 500 grams of carbohydrate can be stored as glycogen in the human body. And my take from that was, so carbs are stored as glycogen first, when possible, not always as body fat. And another thing that the article says was, the fate of dietary carbohydrate not stored as glycogen is to be either oxidized in response to immediate energy demands or be converted to fat by hepatic de novo lipogenesis. Some evidence also suggests that de novo lipogenesis in adipose tissue may have a role in disposal of, of dietary carbohydrate. So my take from that was that if carbohydrate is not stored as glycogen, then the carbs are used immediately as energy or they are converted to fat in the liver or to adipose tissue. Another statement in the article was that evidence to date suggests that it does not contribute significantly to increased fat balance in persons consuming a typical high-fat Western diet. So my understanding of that statement was that for those on the typical Western diet high in fat, carbs aren't really to blame for body fat gain. Another thing that the article says was, however, there are concerns that because highly refined carbohydrates constitute an increasingly large proportion of the diet, de novo lipogenesis may play a more significant role in the general increase of fat stores at a population level. And so my understanding of that was that since people are on high fat diets are also eating highly refined carbs, it would seem that carbs are to blame. Then People Sucks showed me a meal plan that was 200 grams of carbs in total. They said that it's really not all that much. As soon as you go past the threshold of 200 grams of carbs, you go into de novo lipogenesis mode. You seem to think that people need to be gorging themselves before it happens. Far from it. And as the other studies I posted clearly indicated, fat is not the culprit when it comes to de novo lipogenesis. And just so that you know, your body does not know the difference between different sources of fructose. That's a basic fact. The body processes it the same. For obvious reasons, fruit is better than high fructose corn syrup, but fact of the matter is, your body doesn't know the difference. People Sucks also said, may I suggest you read this article. So this article was an article written by Gary Taubes in 2002. Gary Taubes is the author of a book called Good Calories, Bad Calories, and that book has been pretty much debunked by Plant Positive here on YouTube. And in this article by Gary Taubes, um, Gary Taubes is basically saying that 
it's not the fat intake that has caused obesity but the carbohydrate intake and I would have to disagree based on other research that I've done I said surely people are allowed to eat more than 200 grams of carbs per day especially if that energy is being constantly used up 200 grams of carbs is only 800 calories the World Health Organization recommends getting at least 2100 calories a day for someone my size so it's not surprising to me based on research that I've done how so many high carb vegans including myself are able to have such normal looking blood tests including glucose levels even though we consume at least 400 grams of carbohydrates per day there are several blood tests available to see on different channels including Simply Vegan, Rice and Raw, Asina O'Neill, Potato Strong, Durian Rider and Freely some eat a high fruit diet while others base their meals on starch and although I do not personally recommend a fruitarian diet there are several who do and it poses no blood sugar problems for them on the contrary it helps them to manage it this might seem counterintuitive but the results speak for themselves this is consistent with what I have read in the reverse diabetes diet by Dr. Neil Bernard and yes I know he's a vegan doctor but he has had good success with treating patients with type 2 diabetes so he must know something about it Dr. Neil Bernard explains it in simple terms like this if for some reason your body is not making insulin the result is rising blood glucose levels similarly your blood glucose rises if your cells resist insulin's actions we can use diet changes to influence insulin sensitivity directly to lower your blood sugar most medical professionals are likely to prescribe a diet that includes very little sugar they will ask you to limit starchy foods such as bread, potatoes, rice and pasta it seems to make sense if your body cannot handle sugar you have to be careful about eating too much sugar and anything that turns into it diabetes diets also generally cut calories to help you lose weight and limit certain fats to reduce the risk of heart disease and other complications the first glimmer that there might be a better way came from a look at the prevalence of diabetes around the world large population studies showed that diabetes was rare in Japan, China, Thailand and other Asian countries it was similarly rare in parts of Africa these studies also showed something else people in countries where diabetes was uncommon were not following anything like a diabetes diet they were not avoiding carbohydrates they ate starchy foods every day in Asia and Africa rice and other grains starchy vegetables, bean dishes and noodles are staples in fact researchers found that people in these countries ate considerably more carbohydrates than Europeans and North Americans do yet diabetes was relatively rare so were weight problems heart disease and several forms of cancer were rare too I raise this international comparison simply to make an important point carbohydrates do not cause diabetes if anything healthy complex carbohydrates help prevent it as the Japanese diet has become westernized the prevalence of diabetes has exploded in studies of adults in Japan over the age of 40 diabetes prevalence was between 1 to 5 percent prior to 1980 by 1990 it had gone up to 11 to 12 percent it turns out that the genes that allow diabetes to occur are surprisingly common among the Japanese but as long as they stuck to their rice based traditional diet the disease was mostly held in check if we can repair your body's ability to absorb and use the carbohydrates not only can you enjoy healthy carbohydrate rich foods without worry but diabetes itself ought to improve perhaps even go away in discussing type 2 diabetes I have described each cell of the body as being rather like a gummed up lock research has shown this analogy to be surprisingly apt indeed insulin's ability to work is blocked by the accumulation of something within the cells not gum but fat in the February 12, 2004 issue of New England Journal of Medicine Yale University researchers reported an amazing discovery they tested young adults whose parents or grandparents had had type 2 diabetes all were thin and healthy and none had diabetes at that point but some were insulin resistant meaning that when they were given a test dose of glucose it built up more than it should have in the bloodstream the researchers found out why inside their muscle cells were tiny amounts of fat that interfered with insulin's ability to work their bodies made insulin normally and it reached their muscle cells with no problem once it got there though it did not work properly the muscle cells simply could not fully respond to insulin because they contained bits of fat like gum jammed in a lock rendering a key useless how did this fat get there? well muscle cells normally store a tiny amount of fat which provides an energy source for physical activity the amount is normally quite small and the fat simply waits for that day when you are much more active than usual and need an extra bit of energy 
For some reason, in these young people, fat had built up much more than it should have, to levels 80% higher than in other young people. The fat buildup had reached the point where it was gumming up the lock. That is, it was interfering with the cell's ability to respond to insulin. And that meant that diabetes was very likely in their future unless something changed in a major way. In type 2 diabetes, the problem appears to be too few mitochondria. If they had more of these little furnaces inside each cell, things would be very different. Surprisingly enough, it may be that the number of mitochondria you have depends on what you eat. Let me describe a second research study. At Pennington Biomedical Research Centre in Baton Rouge, researchers studied 10 young men. They averaged about 23 years of age, were reasonably trim, averaging 78.3 kilograms and were healthy. The researchers put them on a high fat diet that drew about half of its calories from fat. This is much more fat than you would want to have in your diet, but it's not far different from what many people actually eat. After just three days on a high fat diet, the men had accumulated significantly more intramyocellular lipids. So the first lesson of this study is that fat builds up quickly. Depending on the foods you eat, you can pack fat into your cells surprisingly rapidly. And I also replied about the article by Gary Taubes and I said, I definitely do not agree that people have lowered their fat intake only to have achieved the effect of obesity. As stated previously, it's the adding of refined low fat junk foods to a diet that was already high in fat. The American population definitely did not go plant-based and drop their fat intake to less than 10% of calories. If most people really did that, there would be no obesity epidemic. How many obese long-term fruitarians or high-carb vegans do you see? There is a community of high-carb vegans here on YouTube, hundreds if not thousands, who are either at their goal weight eating as much as they care for from healthy carbs or having just started the lifestyle are reaching it at a healthy rate. Also, please check out Plant Positive's videos about Gary Taubes. It is quite revealing of the misrepresentation of truth that can be found in his book, Good Calories, Bad Calories. Then People Sucks responded and said, and you just pointed out the issue with high carb diets. A normal amount of carbs results in calorie deficit. 